it's as good a sequence as you will see all year long for the kid late in the game. Chris Mullen, Malik Sealy, Felipe Lopez, they've long been associated with St. John's basketball royalty. This season, D'Angelo Harrison has continued to make a case for his own seat at the table while forging his ascent up many of St. John's all-time lists. The senior guard surpassed Lopez as the top three all-time scorer and then joined Mullen and Sealy as the only other 2,000-point scorers in program history on February 3rd against Butler. This should be history. There it is. Two thousand career points for D'Angelo Harrison. My whole thing is make shots when my team asks me to, rebound when my team asks me to, play defense when my team asks me to. So I really took a step back so that everybody else can flourish as well. You know, so it's not just one person anymore. It's five, six guys you have to stop. It's not just you stop D'Angelo and Rashid, then you're going to win the game. It's you got to stop me, Phil, Dom, CO, JB, and CJ to try to win the game. So I think that's my whole thing. Take a step back and let let let, let the team win. Not, let, not, not so much pressure on myself. Um, and you know, just critique little things that, you know, getting way better shape, working on my shot, stuff like that. I'm feisty competitor, you know, he likes to get jacked up and wired. And it's good to have somebody on your backcourt like that, because I'm I'm just kind of the same. So great shooter, you know, um, great scorer actually. Um, he knows how to pick his spots on the court. He's always aggressive. You know, um, he's got a lot better defensively. Um, people have noticed um, um, the person he's guarding really don't score much. So he, he picked up all aspects of his game um, in the offseason. Freshman year till now, his decision making, taking bad shots, all that is out of the system. You know, um, we expect D'Angelo to do some things that you know, other people can't do just for the simple fact that that's him and he makes tough shots. Like from when I first met him to now, he's a whole different person. Like he's been grown. He really matured into a man. And like his game too, he's been grown, I think. Like he perfected his game. Like you could see, like he's improving. Like he could shoot, but he, it's not like he could shoot anymore. Like he's greater. It's like a second nature thing for him now. You know, John Lucas does a good job. He, he was like, Daniel, what do you think you need to work on? I was like, better shape and my ball handling. He's like, all right, let's do it. My handle is way better, um, so, you know, it shows on the court, little stuff. I'm not flashy like Phil or Rasheed, but when I have to get by somebody or I'm in a position where I have to do a move, you know, I have, I have confidence, you know, now that I'll, you know, I'll make that move confidently and be able to make a play for someone over myself. And uh, I came back in unbelievable shape. I think my weight is down 10, 12 pounds from last year. I'm in a good shape right now, if you can't, if you can't tell, you know. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> he's like one of the best shooters I ever played with. Like as far as my career right now, I mean he's one of the best shooters. You can depend on him. Whenever time you need a three, you can go to D'Angelo. And he just like he, like, he get the crowd so hype and he make and like when, like when he get an and one or something, he's just so hype and like and he's like he just gets you going, you know? So like if you can have a bad game, but once he hit a shot or somebody follow him and get an end one, he just jump into his mold and he's just like, oh, now it's time to go. So he just give you that motivation. D'Angelo, he's just remaining consistent. You know, he does what he always does. He puts up um, numbers. And uh, this year, what stands out to me is he's really rebounding a lot. So he's like, you know, adding just more stuff to his game. I didn't even think he could rebound like that. I think he had 17 in the game. Oh man, he, he goes after every rebound, you know? Um, he boxes out and he, he goes get it, you know. Um, usually me and Chris, we trying to box out the big guys. His guy is usually one of the guys who get it back, so he got free free reign to just go get the rebound and he does a good job at it. D'Angelo is funny, you know. He, he steals a lot of rebounds <laughs> to get the stats so, up. You know, uh, no, but he tracks down the ball well. Pursuit of the ball is great. You know, um, it's just basically putting your mind to it. He put his mind to rebounding, so that's why he's so good at it this year. I've always had a good IQ of the game. Ever since I was little, I wasn't always the best athlete. I was always had an IQ, and I was kind of chubby, so I had, to, I had to have an IQ of the game, or else I really wouldn't be able to play or ever get picked up. When I see the ball go up in the air, I, I usually know where it's going to go when it comes off the rim, by where it's shot from and how it hits the rim. So if nobody's moving towards it, I'm like, why not just go grab it? It's free. It's another rebound I add to the stats. So I'm just trying to do little things to help the team out, and that's really all I can do. I just, I just want to win. That's it. I don't want to do anything else but win.
Harrison's journey reflects the hardworking nature of the Red Storm program as he's overcome obstacles every step of the way. It hasn't been easy. Harrison's second year at the program left many doubting if he'd even finish his career in Queens, much less rewrite the history books after a disciplinary suspension ended his second year campaign early. Harrison went through a period of personal growth and reflection both on and off the court that has made him one of Coach Lavin's most beloved players to coach and earned him a place in the conversation among the most decorated members in St. John's lore. Changed tremendously between freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year. He's more focused, you know, he's more of a leader. Um, he lead by example more than his words. You know, he brings a lot to the table and a lot from his game. Um, versatile, great scorer, one of the all-time greats. He's a great player. Oh man, the end of the headache up until about, i say two, two years ago, he was, he was, he was a headache. But you know, his little brother, you know, he got he had to mature and he did it, you know. Um, you've seen a lot of maturity in him on and off the floor. He, he's probably, in my 20 years that I've been an assistant coach, the most proud I am of a kid. And um, you know, we kind of hit rock bottom when we when we removed him from the team at the end of the sophomore year. We all sat down, I told coach, I said, no shot, he'll never play here again. And the kid, in his credit, has, has done everything we've asked of him. And um, I never thought that I would put this word with his name, but he's truly a leader and he, he's given up himself. I'm just really glad for him, his maturation process. I mean, he's a man from a personal standpoint. Last year when he won the Haggerty Award, I mean, he actually gave the award to myself and Coach Rico and pretty much told us, hey, guys, thank you, you guys saved my life. And um, I'm so proud of that kid, where he's come from and where he is and that he is, he's, he's you know, what you want in a student athlete. And, if you would have asked me this three years ago, I'd have bet the house on go the other way. Lav, he's the ultimate giver. He'll give everything for someone else to be okay. You know, he's done so much for my life and for my family. The fact that he suspended me, nobody thought it was a positive thing except him. And then he's like, what is positive? And just, his whole mindset was like, trust me. Like, I, I, I know, I know, I think, think big picture. I didn't know that till after I came back. And so Lav's done, you know, so much for me and I owe him for the rest of my life without, for, like forever <laughs> and ever and ever and ever. Stuff like that, I, I, you know, I live for, um, you know, giving back, um, talking to the fans, interacting with the fans, taking selfies. When I'm like in, sitting in Marillac or something, people are like, like, oh my God, that's him. I'm like, yeah, it is. Like, I, I say something to him, like, yeah, you know, like, I've all, I didn't, ne I never thought, I'm not saying I'm anything, but I never thought I'd be in the position I am now. Or like, if somebody sees me, like, oh my God, like, that's him, you know? So now that it's like that, I love, I love, I love it. Like I enjoy it so much. So I interact with a whole bunch of people on campus, uh, and students. You know, all the students. You know, they 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 don't have to be shy to come up to me and say hello. They know I'm gonna say something back, take a picture, say something funny, do something funny, stuff like that. I want to talk to them too. Like it's it's not just a one way street. Like I'm interested in people as well. So when people are like, hey man, I'm a big fan. I'm like, hey, I'm a big fan of yours because you're a big fan of me. So we get close and you know, I hang out with them and they're like, oh my God, he's hanging out with me. But no, I'm hanging out with you. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it just, oh, it's always a mutual thing. You know, I just how I treat you know, every person when I meet somebody new. So it's just kind of character I am.